I wanted to share with you an experience I had with the Holy Spirit this weekend. So this weekend I was feeling some grief and a challenge I've faced on my spiritual journey is whenever I experience grief, my ego and my mind tries to tell me that I'm doing something wrong, that you know, if I were spirit, if I were a spiritual person, I wouldn't feel grief. For example, um, this is just what the mind is telling me, you know. And um, I was, you know, really having a hard time just shaking those thoughts. Um, they were just very prevalent, and the grief kind of persisted. And I call it spiritual grief. I know there are many different forms of grief, and some people might even call this depression. Though the closest I can say about it in words is spiritual grief. But so, you know, I was having the negativity in my mind about it. You know, something just feel, you just feel off. You just feel off in the spirit, if you know what I mean. So, I was praying, and um, after praying and meditating and reading the Bible, I was, you know, just kind of going about my day, and all of a sudden I felt it well up in my heart, and I know that this is from the Holy Spirit. I've had experiences like this before where it's just, I feel something well up in my heart, and then... I just had this thought of the verse where from the Gospel of John where Jesus said, I tell you these things so that my joy may be in you and so that your joy may be complete. But I was like, for the life of me, I couldn't f remember, well, what, what did he say before that? What did he say before <laughs> that? But it, it definitely felt like the Holy Spirit speaking to me. So I looked up um, that part in the Gospel of John. And it's the part um, where he says, I am the vine and you are the branches. And he also says, um, I am the vine, my father, God is the gardener. And he says, I prune, he says, he prunes every branch that bears fruit in me that it may bear more fruit. And... I just had this profound realization that sometimes that, you know, when we are feeling this grief, spiritual grief is what I call it. Maybe you have another word, um, but maybe God is pruning us and it's not that we're being punished. The, the ego mind is going to try to tell you that you're being punished or that you're doing something wrong. But maybe it's that God is pruning you so that you can bear more fruit in Jesus. And it was just such a profound realization to me. And I started thinking about this um, basil plant. Um, my dad gifted me a basil plant. And it just I, every time I was um pruning that plant <laughs> I kept thinking to myself I was like there's some significance here there's some spiritual significance that I know I'm meant to realize here but I you know it wasn't quite solidified but I just felt it in my heart that there was some spiritual significance there and I immediately thought of the basil because my dad told me, he was like, make sure you prune it because um, if you don't, it'll flower. Once it grows so tall that it flowers, then, um, you know, you it, um, it won't grow anymore and like you can't really eat it or at least it tastes bitter, right? Um, but, but anyway, what it made me realize was... I was like, it's kind of like with the basil, like you prune the basil leaves and when you cut that, it bears that there, you know, in the analogy of bearing more fruit, more leaves 
grows. So like you, you cut and then um, it branches out into two uh, branches. Um, and so I feel like there's definitely like a parallel there. But the thing is, if you don't prune it, then it will flower and you can no longer harvest the basil. And I started thinking that maybe God prunes us so that we can bear more fruit. Maybe sometimes when we're feeling these spiritual battles, this spiritual warfare, as some call it, I say spiritual grief because that's what it feels like to me. Um, maybe God is pruning us because he's not ready for us to flower yet. He's not ready for that full bloom yet. But before that bloom happens, think of all the other fruit that we will bear before the full blooming happens. And so that metaphor just really um, spoke to me and it um yeah I hope that um this touches someone else I just wanted to share that with you because I know sometimes when we're going through you know and it's not always about the circumstances I'm you know we can go through difficult circumstances that can make us feel uh let down make us feel grief but then sometimes Maybe it's a something that you felt that you had surrendered to God or that you had surrendered to God and or something that you thought that you had let go of, but then a wave of grief of that comes back in. And that's been my experience when that happens. I automatically start having sort of self-deprecating thoughts of if you were truly spiritual, you wouldn't be feeling this grief. And that simply isn't the truth. Um, I understand now that when I feel that, I surrender more to God. And I know that he is pruning me so that I can bear more fruit. And I trust God with that. And... I trust in God's plan and in God's will. So, um, also as I had this realization, um, I saw a car bumper that said El Salai, and I was like, I wonder what that means. And I looked it up and it means God, my rock. So I just also, it, it touched me because... It was literally as I had this realization, <laughs> literally as I realized I'm not being punished, I'm not doing something wrong by feeling this grief, God is pruning me so that I may, may bear more fruit in Yeshua, in Jesus. And so, um, and then... As I had that realization, I saw El Salai. So, um, also saw some other things, but um, let's see. So, the other thing this really ties into is Mary Magdalene. Um, Mary Magdalene. And this is something I just recently learned, or let's see, learned is not necessarily the right word, but this insight was shared with me from Dr. Kayleen Asbo, um, but she talks about how Mary Magdalene holds both the grief and the joy of life. She was with Jesus both at the cross, at the crucifixion, and she was also the first disciple that Jesus appeared to after the resurrection. So, um, I 
am planning to talk about this more. It's been a deeply moving experience learning about Mary Magdalene and her deep spiritual love and deep spiritual understanding of Yeshua's teachings. And so I am really excited to keep keep uh, deepening in my faith in that and um, talk about that more as well. Um, I'm praying for you. Um, I'm praying for you that whatever you're experiencing, that you feel God's love and God's presence with you and know that we are all one in Jesus. I pray for unity consciousness through Yeshua. I pray that God fill your heart with his love and with his joy and with his presence and his peace. Satnam, in the name of Yeshua.